is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Reesinger. It is only June, but wildfire season has already sparked around Montana. That early start has stayed wildland firefighters bracing for what could be a very long and challenging summer. Down on Crow Agency, the Bureau of Indian Affairs welcomed an unusually small class of rookie wildland firefighters this year. SQ2's Victoria Hill reports the group may be small, but the reason for stepping up carries a big meaning. Is a momentous occasion. That's especially true for the seven BIA Crow Fire rookies who were sent to the fire line on day one. I thought we'd wait till like August or July, late, you know, like I didn't think we were gonna be working. And then that second day we were training, it was just like, what? Are we gonna be able to go? The answer, yes as wildfire season on the Crow Reservation kicked off early with the Buffalo Pasture Fire in the Bighorn Mountains. We were expecting to wait for a, a little bit longer, but everything popped up. And after seven fast paced days in rookie school. We're pretty much at the last day, so yeah, we're getting in there. Being sent to the front line so early in the year is something that came as a surprise, even to veteran crew members. Look like it's going to be an early fire season. Look like it started right now. Just recent years that we had hardly any uh, moisture. Especially up here in the Bighorns. I mean, we rarely ever get fires up here in the Bighorns, and it was, it was a shock. For members of the Crow tribe, the Bighorns are one of three mountain ranges within the reservation that these rookies now have the skills and knowledge to protect. The wolves, the bighorns, and the priors, and they all hold a different significance for all of us. We like to think of them as sacred and where we can go to clear our heads and find meditation and peace. For a long time, these mountains have been really special to us. Drawn to the mountains through a special connection and drawn to the job through a special bond. My family has all been firefighters. My call has we're the first female firefighters, so it's always been like a dream to like follow their footsteps. Our grandpa joined a while back, and that inspired my dad to do it. My dad, he started back in 1987, 1988. He did seven seasons, and that's what really got me going. My family has been doing it for a few generations now. My grandparents and my great-grandparents, as well as my uncle who's in Helitech, my great-uncle who is a wildland firefighter also, and so I'm just trying to carry on the tradition. Whether they do it for one season or make it a career, the possibilities begin with rookie school. If they come to the rookie school, They'll find out if they like it or not. If they like it, they can make it a career out of it, just like me. When back in 93, I just tried it out, see how it was. But now, I made a career out of it, and I love my job. In a fire season where they could use all the help they could get, interest is lacking. My rookie year, man, there was like maybe four crews. And now, seeing the rookies, we're getting less and less. Like last year, we had like 29, 28 rookies, and this year there was only seven. As the seven get their first look at the scorched remains of Little Bull Elk Canyon, reality sets in as they become the next generation of wildland firefighters. I've heard stories from family, friends that have all been doing this for 30 some years, and they tell me it's actually a lot of fun. You get to go a lot of places you've never been before, so I'd advise that if you like being outdoors, and the wilderness and stuff, and don't mind the heat, something I'll get into. On the Crow Reservation, Victoria Hill, MTN News. And Victoria also tells us as long as the fire doesn't spread to other parts of the mountain, that fire is actually helping replenish the forest floor and clear out old dead timber. On Montana's current wildfire front, adding another 100 firefighters to the state's largest blaze is making a difference. Crews are gaining ground on the Robertson Draw Fire south of Red Lodge. Tonight, that fire is now more than 50% contained. That's up from just 15% on Sunday night. Firefighters today focused on putting out hot spots along the eastern side and also uh, building a contingency fire line to the northwest. Evacuation warnings remain in effect south of Red Lodge and east of U.S. Highway 212, but all others have now been lifted. As wildfires, as firefighters gain ground on that fire, Cooney State Park is now open again. The reservoir was shut down Friday so aircraft could fill up and dump water on the flames. As of today, anglers, boaters and swimmers can get back in the water. 
Well, if you were planning on going all out with fireworks for the 4th of July this year, you might want to think again. Starting at midnight, Yellowstone County will enter stage two fire restrictions, which ban the non-permitted use of fireworks across the county. Q2's Mitch Leggy joins us now with more. In response to the dry conditions across Yellowstone County and the high risk for wildfires, on Tuesday, the Yellowstone County Commissioners put into place Stage 2 fire restrictions, further restricting the act of burning in Yellowstone County. The move by the County Commissioners follows the ignition of three wildfires across the state last week that have burned about 40,000 acres so far. Under Stage 2 fire restrictions, people in Yellowstone County are prohibited from doing the following. Building a campfire for any purpose, smoking, except for within a vehicle or developed recreation site that is barren of flammable materials for three feet in diameter, operating a chainsaw or other internal combustion tool, blasting or welding between 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. It is also prohibited to light off fireworks without a permit from the county sheriff. Motorists are prohibited from operating motor vehicles off of designated roads and trails. With fireworks now banned across Yellowstone County for the 4th of July holiday, officials are asking people attend one of two permitted events instead. One fireworks show in Billings will be hosted at Metro Park, and the other spectacle caps off 4th of July celebrations in Laurel. In Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. And tomorrow, Mitch will bring us more from local fire experts on how to keep your home safe from fire this summer. All right, turning to Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh. It, it's been a hot one out there, but it's also been a beautiful summer in Montana, Wyoming. You've got some pictures tonight to prove it. That's right. Thanks to our viewers. Let's go ahead and start off with this great shot from around the Huntley area with the sunset for tonight. Kelly, thanks for sharing that one on Facebook with us. And while the wildfires can be devastating, they can also bring in some great pictures as well. Kevin, thanks for this one from around the Robertson fire area. And uh, for Ray Masters up into the Bear Tooth, the hills are alive with the color of the wildflowers up there. Just a beautiful shot, still catching on to some of the uh, mountain snow. Loretta shared this one. The dog's name is Zeta and the horse's name is Bill, which is good enough to show the picture right there. And how about this one for cute? You moose be kidding. Justin McKenzie's behind the camera. He came up with that joke. So. If you have any complaint emails, direct them to him. But direct your pictures to us. You can download them on our free downloadable app and check the weather. Also our Facebook page or just email us at weather at ktbq.com. The forecast in just a little while. Those are some great pictures. Thank you, Ed. As the White House announces the country hit the 150 million mark for fully vaccinated Americans, we wanted to know how Montana's numbers match up. So we checked in with Yellowstone County Health Officer John Felton. He says statewide, roughly 46% of the eligible population is fully vaccinated. But here in Yellowstone County, that number is 44%. Felton also says because the large scale vaccination clinics are shut down, the main push to get people vaccinated is during small scale clinics held at businesses and events. Felton also weighed in about the possibility of vaccines for children under the age of 12. The important thing about getting those kids, school kids vaccinated is if those vaccinated kids get exposed to COVID-19 as a close contact, they don't need to quarantine, which means kids don't need to stay home from school, so mom and dad don't need to stay home from work. So it's, I think it's really important that families and, and parents really, really work to get their 12 to 18 year old kids vaccinated this summer. Riverstone Health is offering several free COVID vaccination clinics in coming days. This Thursday, you can head to Billings Central High School between 1.30 and 3.30 or stop in at the Gardner's Market at South Park. That's from 4.30 until 6.30. A complete list can be found on KTVQ.com. As expected, Montana's two U.S. Senators today split their votes on whether to debate a major voting rights bill. Republicans, including Senator Steve Daines, blocked that measure from going forward. Senator John Tester joined all 50 Senate Democrats in support of the measure, which would expand voting access and registration. The bill would also override some state laws passed this year that restrict voting. However, it takes 60 votes to break a filibuster, and all 50 Republicans voted against it. In a statement today, Danes called the bill a political power grab by Democrats. It would undo Montana's photo ID requirements for voting and force taxpayers to fund political ads. A compromise version of the bill agreed to by Democrats does not contain either one of those elements. Tester said the compromise maintains state control of elections, but would protect things such as voting by mail, early voting, and election day voter registration. 
Republicans at the 2021 Montana Legislature ended Election Day voter registration in the state and made voter ID requirements more strict. Well, sometimes you have to tear down before you build back up. Today was Demo Day at Big Sky Economic Development's new offices. The downtown space, although dusty now, is also filled with determination. Q2's Casey Conlon brings us tonight's rebound story. This sign in the lobby of the new Rock 31 Entrepreneur Center says it all. Big Sky Economic Development hopes that this is the first step to build Billings' future. We all With the demolition of this first wall inside the historic Montana Bank building at the northeast corner of Sky Point, a project years in the making can see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're 10 months away from opening a fresh set of doors into a new space for entrepreneurs to connect. The idea behind Rock 31 is a simple one, develop new business for the community. Entrepreneurs like Josh Tenyes, co-founder of Billings-based web software company Cardsetter, say this center is badly needed. I think the number one thing is, is having space that's easy to have serendipitous sort of connections among entrepreneurs. If you have a, a bunch of offices, I don't think that that's really helpful. You have to build those relationships because relationships are important. Right. And sometimes it just takes being in the same space. In five years, Card Center has gone from local to international because of that relationship building. It's a type of business Montana and Billings specifically isn't necessarily known for, but that's the point. Oh, that feels good. You never abandon that, those, those industries that are foundational, but you also have to be innovating and growing and changing and, and incentivizing new companies, other things that dovetail well with who we are but start to change the character of our economy and create more diversity in our economy. You know, look at uh, Silicon Valley, They're, the pillar industry that's there today was not there in 1907. It's completely different and that's, you know, 50 years. So it's a significant amount of time, but that's kind of the, the time scale that we need to be thinking about. Is that where is Billings gonna be in 50 years and what can we do to help put the foundation in place to make that happen? A foundation they hope to build on both the old and the new. Efforts like this, building a center for entrepreneurship development and other amenities in our community, parks, trails, other things that we do, uh, the uh, redevelopment of the Alberta Bear Theater just a block away, all that adds to the character of who we are that makes us uh, attractive to retain our greatest talent and attract new talent, and that's what drives our economy. <laughs> An economy that evolves by the day. Casey Conlon, MTN News. The group hopes to open the new Rock 31 Center in May of 2022. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, music to the ears. A Magic City favorite is back. Up next, we'll meet a pair of musicians who've been playing from the heart for decades as we get ready for Symphony in the Park. Then later in sports, dreams do come true. We'll meet one Montana woman who's off to the Summer Olympics in a not so popular sport. That story in just a bit. From 